This is the handover for the AutoQuest 115. We'll begin on the outside of the vehicle with the service boxes that are this side. First box that you come to is for the battery and for the mains hookup. So open up, there's your batteries there on the right and then you've got your mains hookup on the left. To disconnect the cable, pull back on the blue cap and pull the cable back. To reconnect, make sure the cap is pulled back and then let it lock into position. Always connect to the side of the van first of all before you connect to the mains supply. Directly below this you have the exhaust vents for the blown air heating system. Make sure they're not obscured or blocked in any way. And then further along the van, there's an external aerial point if required. Some campsites offer uh, the facility to connect to uh, an aerial or transmitter that they have on site. If you're going to be using the water heater on gas, you must make sure that this cover is removed. If it's being used on electric or if you're traveling with the vehicle, then the cover stays in situ. And then alongside that, you have your water cap. So key in, turn the key anti-clockwise and then turn the cap anti-clockwise as well. Hose pipe, there's an indicator internally that will tell you when the tank is full or you'll get an overflow back from the spout. Directly below that, you've got blue and grey taps for the fresh water drain, so draining off the fresh water tank, uh, perhaps um, at the end of your holiday, stop any contamination, and then the grey water, which is your collection point for your shower tray, your vanity unit, and your kitchen sink. Turn the tap over, this is in the open position already, um, so it will discharge immediately, and then turn it back over to close uh, to stop any water being, being spilt out when you're travelling. At the back, you've got your toilet cassette. So unlock, and you have a large orange T-shaped lever. Pull up on that lever. Make sure that the cassette valve is shut inside, first of all. Cassette should come out nice and easily. Grab handle if required, and wheels if you want to. Pull the unit across the ground. Otherwise, you'll go to your collection point on a campsite. You'll remove the grey cap completely, and then tip up, and as you do that, press the orange button at the top, that allows the airflow to go into the cassette and allows the waste to come out of the bottom. Before you load it back in, there's a measuring cup inside the top of the cap, up to a cap full of green chemical, um, mixed with about two litres of water, or you can use sachets or tablets instead, and again, mix with about two litres of water. Give it a little swirl around, and then load it back in. Should lock back into position, You'll see the T handle drop down behind the casing and then lock your cassette locker door afterwards. Your bike rack, push up the arms out the way so that you can fold the deck round and lock it into position. Undo the black straps by pressing in the red tab so that you can release and put your hubs through. These will slide backwards and forwards to allow for different sizes of bike. And then you've got these high level straps. Again, similar operation to go around a crossbar on each unit to lock it into position. When you don't want to use the bike rack anymore, fold up, and push the clips back into position, perhaps bring the crossbar down to support it, stop it from opening up whilst the van is in transit. You've also got here the ventilation for the back of the fridge. All right. It's worth noting the exhaust vent for the um, gas side of the fridge is over here on the right hand side. Um, there's no labels to suggest otherwise, but I would always recommend that you keep the kitchen window shut if you are using the fridge on gas. So the spare wheel is located up underneath the back of the vehicle. Should you need to get access to it in the toolbox underneath the passenger seat, uh, there's a long reach winding arm, which is designed to dock into this point here and you wind the wheel down onto the ground and disconnect it and change over. Inside your gas locker, you have a gas bottle. On this, you've got crash sensors fitted as well. So there is a straightforward on off for turning the gas supply on and off. Turn it clockwise and anti-clockwise respectively. When you've opened up the gas supply, press first of all the black button in, hold it in for a couple of seconds and that opens up one crash sensor. And then I suggest using the end of the keys, push in on the green tab and again hold in for a couple more seconds and that opens up the crash sensor on the regulator and that allows your gas load to flow through. Previous owners left in here a mains cable for you to use as well. 
Fuel filler cap is behind the passenger door. Outer part of it isn't affected by the central locking. You just use the ignition key in, hold the cap in position, turn the key anti-clockwise, and then turn the cap anti-clockwise. And there is a hanging hook on the bottom of the door uh, for the cap to sit on while you fill up with diesel. When you open up the passenger door, there are a couple of features. First of all, underneath the passenger carpet is the inspection hatch for your engine battery. Below the passenger seat, you have a toolbox uh, which contains your spare wheel uh, tools. And then on the end of the dashboard, you have your bonnet release. With the bonnet release lever pulled, you should be able to reach in under the bonnet and lift up a central tab. Stalk in. Over on the left hand side, you have your screen watch uh, bottle access. In front of that, power steering, radiator, and brake fluid reservoirs. Engine oil filler cap is there and located in front of it your dipstick. Should you ever need to jump start the vehicle, say if you go and trying to get access to the engine battery, there's a paddle underneath this cap cover here that you would put your positive onto, and the negative goes onto this corresponding bolt just here. So located on the caravan door, you have uh, this uh, Malenko style uh, security lock with the key in, insert and it unlocks and it allows you then to draw the plate around and it would prevent then the caravan door from opening. The internal mechanism allows you to unlock and then turn the lever through 90 degrees for it to block off or go back the other way to secure it and lock it shut. So your electric step operation, the step just inside, uh, the switch just inside the door to allow the step to open and close. And also on the caravan door, you have a fly screen as well. Make sure that the fly screen is fully retracted before you try and close the door, as the door handle might damage the screen. Your leisure battery control panel is located just inside the door above the kitchen units. Choose to turn on the 12 volt system by first of all selecting the master switch. There is a mid position on the control switch above. Always choose your auxiliary, your leisure battery as your source of supply. You can use the vehicle battery as an emergency resource, but not for a prolonged period of time. The other switches that you have, you have an awning light switch on the outside of the vehicle. You have a water pump switch, which I would suggest that you use on demand when you're operating the shower um, or washing up. A main light switch for the majority of your 12 volt lights. Some light switches um, have their own uh, controls. And then a water level indicator. At the moment, it's showing you your battery level indication along the white line. When you press down, um, it shows you your water level indication along the blue line. In the center of the display, you've got two possible lights that might come on. When your gray water tank is approaching full, you'll see a red light come on there. When the water pump is actually running, you'll see a green light come on there. When you go underneath the driver's seat bed bunks, you will immediately see the mains RCD box. RCD switches um, are located here. When they're all in an upright position, it means that your main supply should be coming in. However, you can switch the individual supplies off to the individual units, such as the sockets for the battery chargers. And when you connect onto the main supply, start with it in the bottom position, pull it up, do a test to make sure that the main supply is coming in, it should trip out, and then you can then turn on the main supply switches along. Below that, you've got a bank of 12 volt fuses for the internal operation of the van, so things like the water pump, uh, igniters, and interior lights. Adjacent to the box, you've got one of a couple of the isolator taps for the individual appliances. So this one's specifically for the room heating system. And then you've got the red box behind it of the actual room heater itself. There's a separate door below the wardrobe um, for the access to the water pump and also to the water heater. So the blue box um, is your water heater with its inlet and outlets. Down on the floor, of this cabinet, you have a yellow lever. That yellow lever allows you to drain the water heater out for winter storage. It's critical that you do this. At the moment, it's in a horizontal position against the floor, so it's allowing that water flow to go through. But if you were draining the system off, then you would lift up to the vertical position. You'll hear the water discharging out underneath. Uh, leave the water pump switched off and open up all of your interior taps to allow free drain throughout the vehicle. 
to re -sit use the system to purge it through, put the horizontal uh, lever back in to position. Uh, it can go in either direction, doesn't have to be left or right. And then turn on your water taps around the vehicle to ensure you have the continuity of supply coming through. So you have both the water heater and the room heating controls on the end of the wardrobe. Water heater, first of all, if you're going to use the water heater on gas, you need to remember to remove the plastic cover from the exhaust on the outside of the van. Tip the rocker switch towards the 50 or towards the 70 position. You'll hear a click or a clunk from inside the wardrobe, indicating that the gas boiler is on and then it should start to heat the water up. If there's a failure because the cover's been left on or if there's no gas supply coming through, then you'll see a red light come on in the bottom left hand corner telling you just so. Switch the appliance off, check to see what the problem is, and then begin the process again. If you're gonna use the water heater on mains electric, first of all, you have to be plugged in and connected to the main supply. There are two settings, an 800 and a 1200 watt setting. Neither will make the water any hotter, but they obviously will speed up the process if there's sufficient energy available on a campsite for you to use. Again, a center position for making sure that it's switched off, Turn up to the lower position or turn down for the higher position. This can be used in conjunction with the gas water heater if you want to accelerate the process. Turn it back to the center position to switch off once you're finished. With your room heating system, you've got an upper dial for choosing uh, the output that you want to use. If you turn it clockwise, you will have just a fan and it will just recirculate the airflow within the unit. You can operate it as a gas operated heating system by turning it to the lowest position on the dial. Or there are graduated mains electric positions if you turn it in an anti-clockwise position all the way up to the top to a maximum. Your thermostat, the thicker the line, the warmer the output. To operate the gas hob, lever up out of the way for the glass casing. On the front of your control you have an igniter located just there and then turn over the main burner first of all press in hold it in for a couple of seconds let the thermocouples warm up and then release same for the remaining burners there are no isolators on these lids so if this bring is brought down over the flame it will cause the glass to shatter so make sure that the hob is sufficiently cooled before you close this lid. Oven and grill have separate controls so for the grill function turn the left hand dial all the way around to the maximum position and then use the common igniter to engage it. Hold it in for a few seconds again to let the thermocouple warm up and then it's a similar story with the oven. It's a side opening door And again, turn around to the maximum position on the dial. And then use your igniter to engage the burner at the back. The fridge has a three-way operating system, mains, 12 volt and gas. For mains and gas operation, the van needs to be as near level as possible. So use a spirit level and perhaps use leveling wedges to make sure that the van is uh, on a level ground or a level position for ease of operation. Top dial. Turn the dial clockwise. First position around about two o'clock operates a mains element. Use the thermostat control on the opposite side. The thicker the line, the colder the fridge will become. When you're traveling from A to B, you put it into the battery mode. This takes a feed from the alternator and it maintains the temperature within the fridge. If you set out from home uh, with the fridge warm and dry, you will likely arrive with the fridge warm and dry. It's not sufficient power to actually cool the fridge down. So make preparations by killing, uh, turning the fridge on mains or on gas, first of all. For the gas operation, turn it down to the bottom position at six o'clock. Push in on the thermostat, press your igniter, and then over on the left-hand side, you'll see the red needle rise up into the green zone as it engages. Keep your finger on the thermostat for a few more seconds. Take your finger off the igniter, just let the thermocouple warm up and then slowly release. And as long as that red needle stays in the green zone, then the fridge is running on gas. 
With your bathroom, your bathroom light switch is between the heater controls on the edge of the wardrobe. And then when you first go into the bathroom, you'll see your shower and toilet. So it's a swivel bowl toilet. You can maneuver it into a desired position. On the side of the bowl, you have a lever which opens up a wastegate in the back. And that allows everything to go through. So I do that first of all, let everything go through. And then you have an electric flush button on the back of the bowl. It's taking water from your onboard fresh water tank and swilling it around the inside of the bowl. After you've used the loo, blow it over and it's going to get over and coming back up through. It's a pull out sink above. So swing that one out. Make sure that the sink is resting on the inside lever and then up on the sink for your water to go through. The kitchen roof light operation, there's a brown handle which you push in and it operates the arms individually. You can position the roof light from side to side as well as from front to back, but for traveling you need to make sure that the roof light is fully down and into a locked position. There are blinds and fly screens on either side for nighttime and daytime use. The main roof light at the front, the Hecke unit, you've got two little tabs on either side. Make sure that they're turned away uh, from their locked position. Push up on the roof light, use the grab handle if you wish to, to locate it into position. That's it fully opened at 45 degrees. There's a rest position that you can put it into, which opens the back up uh, around about uh, three to four inches. And then just before it's fully closed, you can put it into a minor vent position on the lower end of the E, as I like to call it, so that it allows for a little minimal gap. You must make sure, however, in transit, that the roof light is fully locked down and closed on both latches. Fly screens and blinds again, on either side for whatever your required need is. All of your plastic side windows are all operating in the same manner. So you have individual levers which you need to open. Open it up. At the top of the stays, you have little twist handles which support and keep that window section open. Undo them and allow it to close back in. Uh, from a Storage point of view, for a minor ventilation point of view, you can lock them in a partially closed position or fully closed. As the label suggests on here, if the water heater is being operated on gas, please keep this window shut, stops any monoxide fumes from coming back into the van. Blinds and fly screens, again, so fly screen down first of all into one position. There are some variable lock positions that you can put the blinds into for nighttime use if required. Moving to the cab and your controls in the cab. First of all, you have um, headlamp beam adjustment here. So if the van is laden um, or unladen, you can adjust the headlamp beam accordingly. The mode button and the arrows take you into a facility for setting up um, things like your fuel economy uh, modes. Trip computer will give you uh, more information about your journey and then on the end of the stalk you have your wiper controls and then back for your screen rinse. Round on the door you have both your electric windows and then you have this separate toggle for the positioning of the um, electric mirrors. Turn the joystick in the direction of the mirror that you want to adjust and then use the joystick then to position that mirror accordingly. Central controls on the steering wheel are all to do with the radio operation, to do with muting, volume controls, and changing stations um, or source modes. Top left hand stalk is for the uh, lights as well as your indicators, both the left and right, back for main beam. Reverse on this one, up on the collar, and then push away and back up. And then central controls for locking the vehicle on the cab. There's no central locking function for the caravan door. The hazard light switch, rear fog light switch, and then heated wing mirrors. Ventilation controls above for speed, temperature, direction, 
and then using exterior or internal recirculation modes. Stereo controls, it's a radio and CD player, and you can choose from FM or AM modes, um, as well as your CD function as well. Cigarette lighter or cup holder, choice is yours. And then your lighter itself, as well as a 12 volt control. The ignition key can be used for locking the central locker box. And then you have additional glove boxes at the bottom and at the top of the dashboard. And your clipboard can also be pulled up as well for document carrying too. Both cab seats are designed to swivel. So into the central passageway, you have a lever, pull that lever out and then that allows the seat to swivel. We'd always recommend that you're out of the seat when you do so. You may want to use the D lever at the front to allow proper rotation without it colliding with the doors. So both driver and passenger seats have um, a range of different controls. You've got front and rear levers, which will allow then the seat to be uh, raised higher or lower. And then backrest adjustment And on the underside of the armrest, you've got wheels for positioning the armrests in their desired location. So that concludes the handover for the Autocrest 115. I sincerely hope this van's gonna give you lots of miles and lots of smiles. However, we are on the end of the phone. You can reach us by email, but on behalf of Highland Camper Vans, thank you very much.